Hello and welcome to another episode of The Average EV. Today we are going to be going over everything that has to do with home charging or level two charging, the Chevrolet Equinox EV. Let's get into it. Okay, everyone, so I've had some time to get used to the Chevy Equinox EV, and I'm going to start digging into the different um, parts of the infotainment. So the part I want to talk about today is everything about charging. So I'm going to go over everything, go over scheduling, setting up preconditioning, time of use, uh, charge later function, dig into a couple of the settings as well. Uh, hopefully this will be helpful to you. I will chapterize everything to make it easier uh, to navigate. Also, if you wanna come back and just watch one thing to remind yourself of how it works. So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead, I'm gonna flip the camera around and start to go over charging with the Chevy Equinox EV. Okay, everyone, here is the main menu for the infotainment. Mine might look different than yours because I've customized and moved some things around a little bit, but you know, we've got the same icon just in a different order that you have. So what we're looking at today is charging. So I'm gonna go ahead, click on that, and it opens to the main menu for charging. Now, as you can see, there are two options that we have here. It says charge now and charge later. So you're gonna pick whichever one you want when you plug in. So if you don't wanna charge immediately and you wanna be ready by a certain time when you plug in, you're gonna click charge later and you're gonna set that up. If you just wanna plug in and you want it to start charging immediately, then you just plug in, you set whatever state of charge you want and you can go all the way up to 100 and you can go all the way down to 5% 5, 5 no, it says charge level must at least be 50, 50%. I thought, I thought so. Uh, but anyways, so there's that. I always charge to 80%, uh, but you could certainly do anywhere. I, I wouldn't go above 80, but you know, 80 to 75, 70 would be pretty good. 50 is good too. If you com feel comfortable with that, that's probably a little bit healthier. Um, I would only charge up to 100% if you're going on a road trip or something like that. So let's put that back to 80. Now, if you want to charge later, this is just you plug in and this time you want it to charge later, not a schedule. So you set whatever time. So maybe I want to be ready by 6 a.m. the next day. And I set that and I want to be at 80%. And now when I get out of my car, it will wait to charge until at exactly 6 a.m. it will be at 80%. Uh, this is a good feature to use for if you're gonna go on a road trip the next day, maybe you bump it up to 100% and you know you all are gonna leave at 6 a.m then it'll be at 100%. Remember, you don't wanna leave your car at 100% for too long because it can uh, damage the battery and lead to increased battery degradation, which none of us want. So just reserve that for road trips and try and keep it there as minimally as possible. Additionally, if you'd like to, you can set preconditioning. So you click there, check, it's ready to go. And if you click here on preconditioning, you can set what temperature you want it to precondition to. I'm just gonna leave it at 72, but you can do whatever you want. This, uh, you would have to change every time you wanna use it if you want different settings or if you want the same setting every time. Just make sure it's always in the change uh, charge later. If you want it uh, to not be that, you do have to click back to charge now. Because once you plug in, uh, I'm pretty sure you can't change it. It will just take whatever setting you had picked. Next here, it's just kind of some nearby chargers. It shows you all the chargers. Uh, that you can choose from. You click, it'll navigate you there. You can set your favorites. I haven't set any favorites. You can um, find some routes on the My Chevy app and you can save them here. And then lastly, accounts. They only have a couple networks available, EVGo, ChargePoint, EVConnect, and Flow Canada. But you can set that up in your My Chevrolet app uh, to have all the information. EVGo and EVConnect do plug and charge. ChargePoint does not do plug and charge. And uh, as of today, which is August 8th, 2024, you cannot access the Tesla supercharger network, but I'm hoping one day Tesla will be here and you will be able to plug and charge. But again, I don't know anything about that. They have not released any information about that to this point in time. Now, something that a lot of people have been interested in is creating schedules. So you go here to the little calendar, no schedule created. You click the plus sign and you pick a day or you can pick several days. Please note that you can only have a schedule, one schedule for that day. So if you do like a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday thing and you save and close, you can't 
you know, do another, like the next Monday, if you want to have a different Monday, you'd have to reprogram it during the weekend, which is fine. I think that makes complete sense. So maybe during the work week, oh, there we go. You want to charge you 80%. You want it to complete by 7 a.m. And you want to precondition, save and close. There it is. So when you go to plug in, it will follow those settings. There you go. Now notice how it says home charge schedule. That will be important in a little bit. Schedules off your vehicle charge when plugged in. Click that on. When you're at home, it'll follow this schedule. So I'm actually going to turn that off because I don't need a schedule yet. And there you go. That's how you delete it. So let's go to settings. So you're, you're going to want to set a home charge location so that the schedule works. So you go here. When you're at the site, you just click. Um, actually, let me do it and show you. So I'm going to remove location. Okay. You click set current location as home. You would do that at your house. It'll save it. And there you go. You're going to want to select your uh, charge core type, so level two or level one. I have level two, so that's what I have. But if you have a level one, you want to click that. And based upon uh, whatever your plug-in option is, you're going to want to choose one of these two options. I'm going to recommend, if you haven't had your, uh, your outlet checked by an electrician, leave it on reduce. It's really slow. I get it. But ha just have an electrician check it to make sure that it can um, handle the continuous current of 12 amps, which is the max that the car will allow. And that will come out of a standard outlet and the EVSC or the charger that your car came with uh, will do a max of 12 amps. You can buy ones that do more, but I think the car is gonna limit you. But here, uh, like I said, keep it at reduce until you get it checked. I know it's slow, but I'd rather, and I hope you would rather be safe and not have your house burned down than uh, put it on max and maybe you're your uh, outlet can't handle it and it catches fire or something like that. So there's that, but I'm gonna go back to level two. And that is that. So I'm actually gonna remove this location and when I get home, I'll, I'll reset it. Now, notifications. This is interesting and actually a, uh, a viewer uh, was asked me a question. I wasn't sure and then they figured it out. So um, shout out to them. I can't remember the name, but thank you. Uh, I really do appreciate it. But there's something uh, that they that they uh, showed me. So first off, charge status feedback. This is basically when you plug in, it will beep. I'm going to cut in some footage of me actually just like plugging in and doing the process. Okay, everyone, I'm going to go ahead, plug in the car, show you what's going on. So you open the door, you take your level two. And this is the one that oh, came with the car. You plug it in and then you're going to hear a beep. And you're going to see that light turn green. And it's gonna flash green and that means that it's charging when that light is solid green that means that it is completely charged uh, but it'll beep and it'll start uh, charging if you have maybe delayed charging set when you plug in it'll go beep beep if you have um, your 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 car door open uh, and charge port door left open it will beep three times three beeps when driver door open and then four beeps is when your charge cannot complete by departure time. So maybe you wanted it done by a certain time, but you plugged in and it's not gonna happen. It'll be like beep, 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 beep. And you'll be like, oh, okay. But that's kind of cool. I like the beep, but it might be annoying to some people, or maybe you live in a neighborhood where you don't wanna draw attention to yourself. So you might wanna turn that off. Next, charge cord unplugged alert. So uh, I actually might wanna do that. So I'm gonna turn that back on. But that will just alert if, uh, when on and your vehicle is locked, it will flash its lights and honk its horn if the charge cord becomes unplugged. So that might be good if someone unplugs it and it will alert them and scare them and hopefully they'll run away or something like that. Charge power loss alert. Uh, when on, your vehicle will beep for an extended period of time if charging power is cut off to alert you. And then lastly, this is important and this is what the viewer kind of pointed out to me, headlight charge indicator. So when you charge, uh, your headlights kind of flash to show what your state of charge is. Um, and I think it's kind of cool, but I could definitely <laughs> uh, understand if people think it's annoying. So if you want to turn it off, you just click off there and it won't do it and your headlights will stay off. But um, I'm going to leave it on because I kind of like it. I don't know. It's my personal opinion. I wish you could set it where like when you're fast charging, it's on and when you're level two charging, it's off. But here we are. Next, fast charge prep. Uh, so this is basically, if it's cold outside, it's gonna warm up your battery. I haven't noticed anything when it's hot outside that it cools down your battery very well. Uh, so, But it could possibly do that, but I just wanna let everyone know I haven't noticed uh, that 
occurrence at all, but definitely when it's cold outside, you're gonna wanna use this press start in a warm up. However, what I would recommend is when you use navigation, navigate to the charger, it will automatically set this up and do it for you, uh, which is nice. And some people allege that if you um, do fast charge prep via navigation instead of manually here, it, it works better. I, I can either confirm nor deny, but I'm just telling you what people say. You can set your preconditioning temperature here again. So just kind of some um, duplicity. They like to do that a lot. And then preferred charge time. So if you have time of use, you would click on, set up all your times here. And then, um, yeah, that'll, that'll work for you in Maryland, uh, at least for me, because I've you can do time of use in Maryland, uh, but because I have solar, they don't let me, which is kind of annoying, but there's that. So that is pretty much it it with the charging menu here. I'm gonna flip the camera around and just give my last few thoughts. Okay, everyone, so that's it there with charging. Um, most of it's pretty straightforward. I hope this video was helpful for you all. If you have any questions, just drop them down below. I'm very responsive and I like to help people. If you notice anything that I missed, put them down below as well. I'm not perfect, I miss stuff all the time. But again, hope you found this video helpful. If you haven't already, please remember to give a like, a subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow me on X, follow me on threads. I've been starting to actually post a little bit more on threads uh, and Instagram too, if you'd like. Uh, but anyways, do all that and I will catch you all next time.